Hi, thanks for tuning into the video. Before we get started, I wanted to invite you over to my personal website at toddbrandon.com. There you can find out more about me and you can even contact me through the website. And now on to the video. Hi everybody, Todd here. I hope this finds you doing well and staying safe. In this video, I want to show you how I export data from an Access database to a CSV file. Now, I could easily open up a table, filter the table however I want to, or run a query, copy and paste that data manually to an Excel file, then save it, and we're good to go. But what if I wanted to automate that process? What if it's something I run on a regular basis, a repeated basis, and it just becomes inefficient to just copy and paste and open up Excel and do all that good stuff? So what I've done is I've created a form to where I can filter my data and I can actually input the file path to which I want to save the CSV so we can actually refine that process down to a couple of mouse clicks and be done with it. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so I'm in my database here, this customer database, and we have this main form uh, to where you can view customers, add a new customer, view vendors. So I've added this export to CSV section and what I'm going to do is set up a uh, process by which I can select a customer state from this combo box. And then I can put my file path in this text box. And then when I click on export, it'll export only the uh, records from the uh, customer table where the customers live in that state. And then it will actually export the file, uh, name it, and export it, save it to the path that I put in this uh, text box. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a query that will narrow the results from our table based on this customer state combo box value. So let me go up to the uh, create tab and I'll go over here to the query section, click on query design. Table customer is already highlighted. I'll click add. I'll close this. I'll open this up a little bit further. I'll click on ID, make sure that's highlighted. Then I'll press shift, press and hold shift, and I'll click phone, which is the last column from that table. Then I'll drag and drop all of those into our results. Let me click into the criteria row here, and then I'll tab over until I get to the state column. So I could click, uh, or I could type Arizona, and tab, and then I can go up here to this results group in the design tab and click on data sheet view just to test that. And sure enough, it runs a query that brings back only records from the customer database where the state value is Arizona. So let me go back to design view, but we don't wanna hard code this. We Remember, we wanna code this or we wanna set this up to be the value that's actually pulled from the form in that combo box so it'll be dynamic. So the way we do that is we, first of all, we need to go find out in our form what the name of this actual combo box is because all your elements will be named. So let me uh, go to right click on that tab and go to design view. I'll click on the combo box and go over here to the properties sheet and note that I've named it CBO underscore cust state. So let me go back to the query and remembering that, I'll go ahead and start typing forms. And then we see this show up, I'll hit tab and it'll enclose forms in um, square brackets. Then I'll put an exclamation point and then I'm looking for the form, the name of the form that we're pulling this value from and that's, remember, main up here. That's our main form. So I'm gonna double click that. And then I'm gonna hit a uh, dot and then it's gonna be the name of our actual element, that CBO underscore cust state. And now I'll hit tab. And if I widen this a little bit, you'll see the entire string. So it's just forms with an exclamation point, then main, which is the name of our form, and then dot, and then the name of our element that we're pulling the value from in the state. So every time the user changes that state and then runs the export process, it'll pull in the value from that combo box dynamically. All right, so I wanna go up here to the tab where we see query one, click on that X, and yes, I do wanna save the changes. I'm gonna name the query QRY underscore cust by state. And we'll use this name in our VBA here in just a second. So I'll click on OK. 
I can close that navigation pane now. Now I'm going to click on my export tab. And then I'm going to go to the property sheet. <clears throat> and that's uh, CMD underscore export is the name. Then I'm going to go on the event tab. I'm going to go to the click row. And then over here in the on the right-hand side, there's this button with three dots. That's the builder button. We'll click on that. I'm going to select code builder from this choose builder list. Click OK. And it's going to open up the VBA code window for us our code editor and then it automatically starts this private sub for us and it's command underscore export which is the name of the button and then underscore click because that's the event so the easiest way to do this is we use this do command so it'll be d d o c m d and it'll be transfer text and as i start to click i mean i'm start to type transfer you see there's transfer database, there's transfer spreadsheet. We're looking for transfer text. So I'll double click that and then I'll space. And once I space, it shows you in the IntelliSense the different arguments we can use. And so I'm gonna type AC export delimited and that's gonna be right there. I'll double click that, I'll type a comma. I'm gonna skip this argument. It is an optional argument as denoted by the square brackets. So I'm gonna skip that argument. Now I need my table name. And in this case, we're not actually exporting a table, we're exporting the results of a query. So I'm gonna, between double quotes, I'm gonna put the name of my query, QRY underscore cust by state. And then I'll type another comma, then we need our file name. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just hard code it to show you how it works. And my path is gonna be C, and it's gonna be, let me make sure. What is my path? I want to send it to this CSV exports path. So I'm going to copy that and then go back over to my VBA editor window and I'll just paste that in. And then I'll type a name of a file. I'll just say my export dot CSV. Close that in double quotes and then another comma and for has file uh, has field names I will just type true because I wanted to bring in the field name headers and then I am done with that so I'll just put a message box in here to let me know that it's done export is complete all right so Again, it's do command transfer text, do command dot transfer text. The first argument is AC export delim, delim. Then there's no second argument. The third argument is our table name or our query name. And then the fourth argument is the file name, including the path. And then we set um, has field names to true. So we get all the header uh, fields in the, uh, <clears throat> in the top row of our export. So I'm gonna close this. Then I'm gonna go back to form view and I did select Colorado there. Let's go ahead and select another state and then run this export. And so it says export is complete. Let's go over to our path and there is my file, my export CSV. Now if I double click this, open it up in Excel, we'll see we do have only records from the customer table where the customers are from the state of Idaho. So quite literally with one line of code, and of course, the creation of a query, you can export data from um, Microsoft Access to a CSV file like no problem. And in fact, you, didn't, you don't even have to have a query if you're not gonna filter anything, if you're just gonna export the entire table, uh, you don't even need a query. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how we can do a few other tweaks to this, that uh, sub procedure. And first thing I need to do is I'm gonna go to my um, my path text box and it's text underscore path or txt underscore path. Now I wanna go back to that uh, click event. I'm gonna set a couple of variables. And now I could easily put um, that, in fact, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to remove this path portion of the file name and I'm just gonna put that slash with the actual file name in double quotes with the .csv on it. I'm going to put uh, txt underscore 
path. And then I'll put an ampersand. And so that's going to concatenate the actual path once I put it in that text box in the form. And that'll be dynamic. So if we were to change that path, we can change it to another drive, a network drive, but we can do it in the form so it will dynamically change and then just keep this naming convention. So let me go back and just so you know, text path is the form element. That's the name of it. doesn't need to be in double quotes. It stands on its own. It's not actually a text string. So let me close that. Let's go back. Let's go to um, form view. And let me just make sure. Let's copy that and put it in our form. We'll paste that in and we'll run the export. Export is complete. Let's go back to our folder. What it does is it saves over it if it has the same name. So let me try something different here. Let's go back to access. Let's go back to the form um, and to the uh, design view. Let's go back to our procedure and then let's make this my export one. Let's save that, close the editor and then go back to form view and then click export again. Export is complete. Then we'll go back to our path. And we do, in fact, have a, a second file now. So to take this a step, a step further, we can actually use this value from the uh, combo box where the state is and add that into our file name that gets saved to that, that file path. That way, if you export, you know, value, I mean, export records from Idaho, it'll have Idaho in the title or in the, uh, the file name or let's say you select California, it'll also you know, say California. So that way you can kind of keep track of your exports. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to form view, I'm sorry, design view. And then with export highlighter, we'll go back to that procedure, click on that builder button. And so what I'll do here in this argument, I can do my export, I can close that double quote, put an ampersand, and then now I'll do CVO, cust state, another ampersand, and then enclosing that dot CSV in double quotes. So what I've done here is now I'm bringing in the value from that combo box. So it should say my export Idaho dot CSV. Actually, what I would like to do is put an underscore in, or yeah, um, an underscore and then it'll separate my export from the state. And then I'll put one here. Actually, no, that should be fine. All right, so then what it's going to do, we've already got the text path coming in from that form element, so it's dynamic. And then the file name will be my export, but it'll have the state in the actual file name. So we can decipher one from another. So let's go back. Let's click close. And let's go to uh, form view. And now I'm going to select, I'll just run this export for Idaho. I'll click uh, OK. And then if I want to run another one, let's do one from main. Click export. Export is complete. Now let's go to our folder. So see here we have a, an export with Idaho. We have an export with main. If we open up that one from main, you'll see that it is a record. It looks like there's only one from the state of Maine. So that's how you um, transfer data from Microsoft Access to a CSV file and save it and actually how you can do it dynamically. You can name the file dynamically with the actual state that you choose in your form. So between a combo box and a text box, you can actually dynamically and programmatically set up a process where you can take records from your customer table by state and then save that automatically as a CSV to the file path that you choose here. There you have it. How to export data from a Microsoft Access database to a CSV file and use a form to do it dynamically. Thanks for watching and have a great day.